Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Real Talk, Come Follow Me. We are on section 93. I lost my spot in the scriptures <laughs> okay, to do sorry. that. No, I got I'll it. I'll pause for you. <laughs> I got it. Receive. Uh, receive of his fullness. One Again, like as we go through these, like the month of August is no joke. A we lot have, of God. Yeah, I'll, God, the power of godliness in 84, and then we get 88 and... What did we just talk about last Word time? Of Word of wisdom in 89 and, and so many other things in there. And I, I've heard section 93 called the Holy of Holies of the Doctrine and Covenants. And so it, it is just a tremendous, tremendous section. And there's a lot of interesting things in here. But again, this is one of those sections that no matter how much you study, there's always more. Mm-hmm. There's always more. But I like starting with verse 19. Good, because I'm going to start with verse 1. I know, you took verse 1 this time. (laughs) That's all right. But I really do like 19. I give you these sayings that you may understand and know how to worship and know what you worship. Another way of saying that is, and know who you worship. Mm -hmm. This is going to describe the development of Christ and why we worship him. And then that you may come unto the Father in my name and in due time receive of his fullness. I would definitely mark the in due time, meaning it might take a minute. Yeah. Or a few minutes. So, Which is a great segue to, I think, the king of all of verse ones. I know. I, wa- I would love to do a poll of what's the best first verse in all of scripture. Because that's my thing. I like the I first know. verse. And I think this one could win. Yeah. In our prep, you were like, oh, it's the so, best first. So mad you took it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So this is the first verse of all first verses verse one says verily thus saith the lord it shall come to pass that every soul who forsaketh his sins and cometh unto me and calleth on my name and obeyeth my voice and keepeth my commandments here's the spot shall see my face and know that i am that is why it is the king of all first verses (laughs) it's it's giving you this opportunity and i love how you set up this discussion Mm -hmm that really in this section, we're gonna understand the characteristics of God. Please be aware that the characteristics, the personality, that this person of who we are having a relationship and what we started season two with, Mm -hmm. which was to really have our own sacred grove, second comforter experiences, this verse is saying an invitation for a face-to-face encounter with that in mind, I think it's important to understand that the characteristics we're going to learn about and discuss today are not gender specific. Exactly. That's really important to know. And I would also add to it, we, we also know that as we come to the Father through the Son, we're coming to our parents in heaven. Right. And so all of these attributes really flow through our heavenly parents, the Savior. And so we, I, I would look at it to, to expand the gender side of that. I would add that to it as well. And you know what? That was a really uh, important emphasis to point out because I don't know if this is common. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to be honest. I feel a really a, an awareness and a closeness with the Savior and sometimes a distance with the Father mm-hmm. and even a further lack of understanding of of my heavenly mother. And so I think that's a really important pause to say, when you come to know one, you come to know many. Yeah, right. exactly. And so I would would be open to that. Um, As we go through, so this is one that I really like asking a bunch of teenagers, like what was Jesus like as a kid growing up? Like if you were one of his siblings, older or younger, what, what kind of an impact do you think it would have having someone like him grow up in your home? Because it would definitely be different. And we have all sorts of, uh, and we have some fun with this and just kind of talk about what that would, would it, would it have been awesome or would it maybe not have been awesome or right. like you could never live up to or right. so right, so on and so forth. And Did he always share his toys? I know. Yeah. Well, and that's what's interesting because then you start thinking about questions like, well, did Jesus cry as an infant? Mm-hmm. Um, did Jesus knock things over? Mm-hmm. Did Jesus, you know, do all, just as a daily savior, what was he, as a child, an infant Christ, what was he really like? A mortal. A mortal, because he, he needed to experience mortality as much as he could. And I think this is, we talked about this, one of the reasons why The Chosen resonates with a lot Shout of us, out. because it, it more emphasizes the humanity of Christ, where a lot of our Bible videos, and no, nothing's wrong with either one, they more emphasize his divinity, mm-hmm. but he's both. He's he incorporates both. it yeah. all. And so when you get in, you just start thinking, well, who would you ask that would have a good answer of that? 
And the in here it's John the Baptist. So we're gonna get some scripture from John the Baptist, and we're promised that more is gonna come. Right. But as of right now, um, so if you look at verse eleven uh, through fifteen. And farther, you'll get John the Baptist is the one speaking. But he's like, I want you to understand who Christ was. And John would know he was his cousin. He was six months older. So you would assume they were pretty pretty close. And verse so at 12. So family reunions, that's who was hanging out. Yeah. And so this is John. And I almost picture him with a little <laughs> smirk on his face as he he's writes He's the this. one you know is like going to go dig up the bug. Yeah, exactly. Right? We know that for sure. Yeah. Well, yeah, we do know that for yeah, sure. we yeah. do. And I, John, saw that he, he, meaning Jesus, received not of the fullness at first, but received grace for grace. And he received not of the fullness at first, but continued from grace to grace until he received a fullness. And thus he was called the Son of God because he received not of the fullness at first. Those are three verses in a row. What does John the Baptist want to make sure is very understood about Christ? He received not a fullness at first. The whole youth program is based off of this. Luke chapter 2, verse 52. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Like, which means if he increased in those things, it means he wasn't fully creased. I don't know, whatever it is. He just wasn't fully developed and stepped in. It was his pattern of progression. And so let me me read, um, I don't know if we'll do two two quotes, but I definitely want to do the James E. Talmadge one. Because... Because it's James. Because it's James E. It's Tal- James E. Tal- Because he'll say more in one sentence than we'll say in a whole book. I know. Right? It's so true. So he said, Jesus came among men to experience all the natural conditions of mortality. It's important that Christ experienced humanity. He was born as truly a dependent, helpless babe as any other child. His infancy was in all common features as the infancy of others. His boyhood was actual boyhood. His development was not as necessary was as necessary and as real as that of uh, of all children. And then I love this: over his mind had fallen the veil of forgetfulness common to all who are born to earth, by which remembrance of a premortal existence is shut off. The child grew, and with growth there came to him expansion of mind, development of faculties, and progression in power and understanding. His advancement was was from one grace to another. And that's where it becomes different. That's where he's Jesus and we're not, right? Like he could go from grace to grace. There was no backing up and all of that. Like we, (laughs) Elder um, Lynn G. Robbins of the 70 gave a talk until 70 times seven. And he talks in there about how we go from failure to failure. That's the way we go. Jesus went from grace to grace. So his ability to learn and grow and understand expanded significantly and quickly. But we know for sure by the time he was 30 and was baptized, which John the Baptist is going to say in verses 15, 16, and, and, even, and even 17, is he's going to say once he was baptized, he received of the fullness. So we assume by that point, he was f- a fully developed... Aware of his mission. Yeah, aware of it, knew what he was about, knew exactly what... He was very clear. And then I'll say one last thing on this. We also know he still wasn't fully developed Mm -hmm. because we know from the Sermon on the Mounts, one in Jerusalem and one in uh, the land bountiful in the Book of Mormon, that in one he says, be therefore perfect even as my Father which is in heaven. And And then the other one after his resurrection, be therefore perfect even as I my father, which is in heaven. heaven. So I think we just need to take a minute with this and understand that Jesus was Mm-hmm. Pretty normal for a while. And I, we have used as a family the Luke 2.52. I think that's the reference yeah. of growing in wisdom, stature, and favor with God and man. That has been our pattern for making New Year's resolutions. Yeah. So I know we're a little early. But if you don't have youth in your home that are doing the youth program, it is a great way in which to pattern your life after the Savior mm-hmm. because we're being taught in this section, this is how the Savior became who he yeah. was sent to earth to become. And we were sent here to become what we were sent here to become. So which ver- is. Which is verse 17. <laughs> yeah. It really talks about the culmination of both in heaven and on earth. And the glory of the Father was with him, for he dwelt in him. And that promise is, is by extension to us as well. Mm-hmm. As Christ is in us, that glory of the Father can be with us. And so I want to jump to the King Follett discourse. 
Why not? We're in Section 93. We might as well go there. Right. Because (laughs) I'm a huge Nauvoo fan, and Nauvoo is like a special place of my heart, and our producer, who is actually cheering off camera right now. So (laughs) once you serve in Nauvoo, it doesn't get out of your system. And maybe not everyone, I'm not going to say names, don't love Nauvoo as much. Don't call me out like that. Okay, I don't love Na- Nauvoo all the time I've been there. That's okay. fine. That's I said fine. It. I said it. It's fine. But I, I was so introduced to the King Follett Discourse. And if you don't know about the King Follett Discourse, it is really where Joseph taught the most um, powerful doctrines about divine nature and eternal progression. The King Follett Sermon was the most quote unquote, direct public explanation of these doctrines, but it was not the first time they've been introduced. So the King Fall Discourse stood apart as the defining moment, but when these key concepts finally had come together, it was nearly 50 years after this that Wilford Woodruff, while speaking at the dedication of the Salt Lake Temple, declared that listening to that specific discourse was the strongest spiritual experience of his life. Wow which I think 50 years later, it was so great that there were those that had been there that were still testifying. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's ultimately an experience for us to stop and consider that receiving all the power, like you just shared, that Jesus was progressing by grace, right? But that he also was increasing in capacity. Mm -hmm. And at times I pray to the Lord and I pray for these miracles or I want a spiritual gift or I want to have something in my life become a strength instead of weakness. Mm -hmm. And I feel almost like God's like, "Uh, you're not quite ready to receive all the glory on that. And, And so as we are pondering on this verse on verse 17, I love this quote from Spencer W. Kimball. In 1968, my husband was a few months old. I don't know. Um, So 53 years ago, He said, the ultimate and greatest of all knowledge then is to know God and his program for our exaltation. And that reminds me of our Anthony Sweat conversation about what the Book of Mormon can do and what the Doctrine and Covenants this year can do for all of us. And then this is where I would love to invite our, our listeners to have a conversation. We may know him by sight, by sound, and by feeling. And I just have wondered this year, as we have gone through the Doctrine and Covenants, have you taken the invitation to have your own sacred grove experience? And have you come to know God differently, maybe better by sight, Mm -hmm. by sound, or by feeling? And I also think what's good about that pondering is that sometimes we want to have the sight experience, right? We want to see God. Who Mm -hmm. doesn't want to see God, Mm -hmm. right? But this verse I think is saying you're receiving the capacity but maybe you have come to know God more by sound, which I think is a fascinating thing to ponder on, or by feeling this year, hopefully. What are your thoughts about this? Well, I just sit and as you, as you, as we were talking about this before, I was thinking, how have I seen the Savior? Because I, because I, I'm one who I'm, I'm like a lot of us like to see, and we're very sight-driven mm-hmm. beings, um, and we're very we we rely on our sight maybe more heavily than. We, we probably should, to be quite honest with you. But, and, and I'm not saying that's bad, but I'm just saying we, we just are naturally just... Physical just, eyes versus yeah. spiritual. So I think, well, how can I see the Savior in my life? And, and I, I would simply say the evidence of his existence is you can see it everywhere. Mm-hmm. You can see it in small miracles here and there. You can see it in, I feel peace and it doesn't make sense because everything around me is crazy. It's Joseph Smith. I keep referencing this. You can't get me to stop. Section 123, verse 17. He turns a a dungeon into a temple in Liberty Jail. And you just think, like, you can see, like, I can see the hand of God in his life. I can see the hand of God working with my kids, with me, with my students in a classroom. And so I think if, if it's a priority, it's it, we've probably seen God in a lot of different ways that would that would amount to maybe even a mountain of evidence that we've seen him. And it may to, just maybe through other people. And to quote Les Mis, yeah. to love another person is to see the face mm-hmm. of God. And I, I love the idea of expanding maybe what a, a sacred grove experience could be. It could yeah. be in your feeling. It could be in sound. It could be in... A relationship with another person. Well, and you you relate it to the sacred grove, and I think it's important to go back and remind remind people of this. 
who was in the sacred grove. There right. was Joseph, there was Satan, and there was the father and son and, and, and angels. And angels. so yeah. and so it's like all of those things are so expect those things, both the darkness and the light. Every time. In your sacred grove experiences and it's okay. And in your relationship. Yeah, and it happens they go through the scriptures and look for light and dark experiences. They're always right around each other or even happening simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Like with they just happen all to it's one experience. Moses in Moses chapter one. Right. That happens to him. Right. And we just talked a few weeks ago that there's war and then we talk peace, right? Mm -hmm. It's the oppositional law that is predicated on so much of what God does in our lives. Okay, so we're going to jump to verse 19 and 20. Are okay. you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. So a portion of these verses, I give unto you these sayings that you may understand and know how to worship. Verse 20 goes on to say, you shall receive grace for grace. So this is kind of the theme this week, mm -hmm. right? We're doing the line upon line. We're progressing. We're receiving glory. But I want to go back to the idea of what worshiping is. Okay. I think it's a phrase that maybe within our religious identification, we don't use it or we haven't in the past used it as often. Would you say that's true? Yeah, we don't I would talk say that. worship music, praise music. Mm -hmm. We're getting more often, I'm hearing that, but I think we say it on the show a lot. But yeah. <laughs> I love the idea of what worshiping together looks like, and especially. Uh, after going through a pandemic together. So I went to the church's website because we know on all of our church buildings, it says visitors are welcome, yeah. right? It says that. It yeah. says that. Do we feel that culturally? Do we experience mm -hmm. that? So I decided to go to the church's site and we are a Christ focused community. It says it right on <laughs> the website and it says we're doing our best to love and serve others come join us. And we're going to provide the link to this, but I love the way the church laid it out. They put these little boxes that have the question. And then if you click the box, it gives you the answer. And I'm a word person and you're a word mm -hmm. person and we write and I, whoever helped on editing this portion of the site, I, I just want to give you a raise because <laughs> it is very approachable. Well, it's the, we talked about Frederick, Frederick G. Williams it's being lively. a lively member, whoever, whatever group put this together are lively members. Yes, we're giving you a shout out yeah. and you probably are never gonna get the recognition, but we hope you watch Real Talk. So there's a <laughs> box that says, do I have to participate in church? That made me laugh because- <laughs> I still ask that sometimes, I'm like, do I have to? <laughs> yeah, because if you go visit a church that you've never attended before, yeah. you're like, and if you know anything about our faith, you, you're maybe afraid someone's gonna call on you or it's testimony Sunday, Yeah. right? So the answer is visitors are are welcome to participate, but they are not required to. So I thought that was great. Yeah, and it talks a little bit about the sacrament. They even say, or communion mm -hmm. on the church's site. I don't know why this is making me so happy, but it really feels in, in enabling and encompassing, yeah. right? Yeah. Good words. If you don't feel comfortable participating, simply pass the tray to the next person. Not all this cultural, like, no, you're not supposed to take it, right? How many times have we been in that situation when our visitor comes? It says here, feel free to sit back and just enjoy the service. I love that. The next box, can I participate if I'm not a member? And the very first word is yes, explanation point. You are invited to join us for weekly activities, social outings, service projects, and church services. We'd love to get to know you and we'll appreciate your involvement in the community. So expansive, yeah. I love that. And then it talks about what clothes we can wear. And we've talked about that on- White shirts and ties, right? No, ripped jeans, I think it says ripped jeans. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. No, it says, you are welcome to come in any clothes you feel comfortable in. Most men wear button-up shirts and ties and women typically wear dresses or skirts and children usually dress up too, usually, typically. I think depending on the area of the world that you're worshiping in, even if you're a member. Well, and also you, you as you go to a new faith, some people don't want to just stick out. And yeah. so it's nice to know, this is what I should expect. And if I have that, right. then I'm going, you know. Which is why I love this mm -hmm. formatting. But if you don't, it's The fine. church put it right there. And then this is, the, this is so great. For those of us that remember church back in the 70s, when we would go to church, come home, go back to church, come home. Like it was like seven hours of church. And then they went to the block consolidated. 
made mm -hmm. it three hour. We're like three hours. That's nothing. Then we went to two. Then we had a pandemic, and now yeah. two feels way <laughs> yeah, too long, right? It does. <laughs> so there's the last question says, "How long are your services?" And it says each meeting is one hour, but if you attend both, it will be two. I just found this a really uh, welcoming invitation, but it was clear that the church is saying visitors are welcome. Come as you are. Be a part of our community. Be a part of our service. And so as we look at this verse of scripture, I think worship, it can look a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. And I hope this week, this is a great opportunity to say, how are we worshiping? How have we watched other faiths wor worship? I grew up in a community that was very interfaith based. Mm -hmm. So I would go to church with my friends that were Catholic and yeah. the community church and learned a lot of different ways of worshiping. Do we, you have anything you wanna well, add? We used to call, we would call that a home and home. Oh, where like in, I, don't I think even it's know in college means. football. It's like where oh. you know a team goes. They they agree with another team. We play on your home field. You play on our home oh. field. So you do a home and home. So if you have someone of a different faith, be like, let's do a home and home. I'll go. I'll go to church with you, and you come to church with me. Hey, let's I have some fun together. And it's not. And, and it's just. It's in fun. It's not in competition. Right. Who's is better? It's just. Let's experience something and have a good friend with us to kind of help. You know. Make it so we feel a little bit more comfortable and accepted and all of that. And just, I mean, there's nothing wrong with going with your friends no. and experience and having a religious experience with them. That's also can be part of worship. So I've talked about my son living on Molokai. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have the chance to go to church very often because he has to hike 1700 feet, 23 switchbacks for an hour to go. and when he has the opportunity, he can do the sacrament for the one other member on the peninsula. Mm -hmm. But the one time he's been able to attend church, the couple in their ward that picked them up after they hiked, took to, took them to a Catholic mass first, mm -hmm. and then they did two hours of the LDS service. And my, my longest junior high, high school friend is Catholic, and we always would go to church together. And I just visited her with her, and I told her the story, and her mom's like, oh, it's the second generation of the home, <laughs> home, what is it called? Home and home. Home and home. I think that's what it's called. Okay. College football's been Thanks away for a while. Thanks for teaching me <laughs> sports analogies. Yeah. So um, the one last thing I'll say, and this is just kind of a, this is cool verse. Okay, verse so, 24. Verse 24. So um, it's one of my favorite verses that uses the word truth. And it says, and truth is the knowledge of things as they are, as they were, and as they are to come. And you're like, okay, fine. And then you move on. But pause for a second. Truth is a knowledge of things as they are. are, present tense. Things as they were, past tense, premortality, and things as they are to come post-mortality, spirit world, and, and so on. Truth is a knowledge of the plan of salvation. Mm. And so who is the truth? We've spent the, whole, spent the whole first part of this chapter on who it is. It's Jesus. And we also know about that from John 14, 6. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. But then after it, it says, so what knowledge do we need to have? So that's the relationship, what knowledge. It's a knowledge and understanding of the plan. And that will, and that will bring in light and spirit, which is it's gonna talk about joy, receiving commandments, receiving truth and light, choosing it. All of those principles are in the next 10 verses or 12 verses. And so um, those two things together, who is the truth and what is the truth is really a beautiful kind of um, connection in, these, in this section. Awesome. So for our invitation. Yeah, let's go back to <laughs> we want to invite you to invite someone. We yeah. want you to expand the idea of worship. So in the area you're at, you still may be able to participate in church via Zoom. And maybe you're back in in person. There is a great link that we're going to have in the show notes where you can go and reference those little boxes that we just talked about. And also you can plug in an address. And if you have a friend that lives in another area of the world, they can find where their local branch or ward is meeting and they can attend. So it's a pretty bold inv invite this week, right? Well, and I would say even with that to kind of ease us, because sometimes I start explaining things and I over explain what our you church like experience is. No, you did. <laughs> No. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what I mean. Thank you for that. Understanding my passive aggressiveness. No, but what I was saying is I would use this link and say, hey, would you be interested in coming to church with me? Um, some, you know, we, we worship on Sundays. Here's kind of what you can expect oh, and send the yeah, link yeah, yeah. and just let them read through those short so questions and answers. The... And it's just simple. It just takes some of the simplicity or some of the 
you know, the nervousness that a lot of us might have and just send it to them and say, here's some of the things you can expect. Let, you know, let me know if you can come, if you have some questions. Great. Love and to see you there. Blame it on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it goes poorly. Right. I'm okay with that. And thanks again for joining us. We'll see you again next week on Real Talk. You guys, you guys, please like and subscribe and click the bell. Like and subscribe. What did I say? You did it. it like perfect. and subscribe. That was so perfect. And click the bell. Just do it. <laughs>